The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for we shall understand our help and our God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Teach, Teach us, Lord, to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. Satisfy us with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad in all our ways. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand as we are able and sing together, How Can I Keep From Singing? It is number 821 in the hymnal.
Our scripture lesson this evening is taken from the Gospel according to John. John chapter 14. Some very meaningful, familiar words that tonight on Ash Wednesday bear even more meaning for us. Let us begin at verse 1 of chapter 14 of the Gospel of John. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have you been with me all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will also live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have, who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will re reveal yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. And simply to repeat the very first words, Tonight, of the first couple verses, Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, you there you may be also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, there are many things in life that we want to do again and again. But there is something, O oh Lord, that we know we only do once. And our whole life moves towards it. So we pray on this kind of a night, where there are ashes and heavy thoughts, that when the time is right, and when we have finished our business, and when we have come to terms with our mortality,
that before then, in the small and the large losses of life, in the giving away of possessions, in the parting of close friends, in changes around us of job or house or church or world, that we may understand loss and be able to still live, that we may live and still hope in the resurrection. This we pray tonight. Amen. So I was having a conversation earlier on, and I said, it seems like we have been in Lent for two years. <laughs> Getting ready for Lent again. How are we going to do it this year, this time? Waiting and waiting and waiting. Are we not tired of waiting? Haven't we learned how to be patient yet? All right. Fasting. Fasting and fasting and fasting. Fasting on hugs, fasting on travel, fasting on large family gatherings. Too much fasting. Contemplating. We've contemplated life. We've contemplated death. We've contemplated science and faith and contemplating, contemplating, contemplating. There's been a lot of denying in the last days. And Lent is a season where we deny ourselves. And it seems like we've been denying ourselves a lot in the last couple of years. As a paraphrase of Psalm 77, I think it hits the spot. The paraphrase is called, I cry to God. I cry to God and he hears me. In my time of trouble, I seek him. By night, my hands plead in prayer, but I find nothing for my comfort. I think of God and I moan. I meditate and feel useless. God keeps the sleep from my eyes, and my speech is lost in confusion. I thought of days gone by and remember times now vanished. I spent the night in deep distress while my spirit murmured within me. Will God reject us forever? Will God refuse us his mercy? Has endless love reached an end? Are God's promises now invalid? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has anger doused his compassion? Has God's mighty arm lost its grasp? Does it hang powerless beside him? Let me now remember God's work and recall his wonderful greatness. Let me meditate on his power and remember all God has done. Maybe this Lent, we need to recall God's wonderful greatness. Which is a little hard to do as you're walking up to receive ashes on your forehead. But in that small gesture, we think of bigger things. We recall how many times we have heard the graveside words, Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. From God we came, and to God we return. In God we live. We are part of a cycle of living and dying. In God we die, and in God we go to eternity. Ruth Burgess wrote these, I think, telling words for us tonight. She wrote, Diggers and burrowers, Gardeners and growers, plowers and diskers. Okay, I changed those two so it fits for us. Um, <laughs> we turn the earth. <coughs> Spring into summer, summer into harvest, harvest into hibernation, generation to generation, we turn the earth. We are made up of stardust and memories, of warmth and wonder, of blood and bread. We are made up of seeds and sinews, of hope and harvest, of living and dead. We are made up of genes and memories, of tears and laughter, of bones and breath. 
We are made up of God and glory, of love and questions, of life and death. May this season of Lent be unique for you. May you constantly look for the blessings. Look for the eternal things. Work for the eternal things. As springtime dawns and happens around us, and we accept the ashes of death, and even the dying of winter, may you be wonder-filled. May you find the grace, not just in the moment, but in the eternity. And may what we do in the sharing and the ritual of ashes remind you not only of your own story, your own life and death, but how it ties into the much bigger and greater story. And may you be blessed. Let us pray. Lord of all life, when others have died, we have thought of death as a natural thing, as something that a life that grows and flourishes and is fragrant and then returns to the earth. It is when we consider ourselves our own death that sometimes we fear. We ask that wonder fill us the wonder of life, the wonder of Jesus' promises and waiting for them to be fulfilled in ourselves, even though that involves the dying. Lord of all life, remember us in our living. Remember us in all of our days and hold our hand for the time to come. This we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. We're going to sing tonight hymn number 805, Come Sing to God. And you're welcome just to remain seated as we sing this hymn together.
leave a mark on our foreheads. It is a very ancient sign. It is a sign of the cross. The Bible tells how Job and many others throughout the long story of God are covered in dust and ashes in their grief. It is a sign of our earthliness, symbols of our dirtiness, symbols that we are elements of the soil breathed to life by the Spirit of God in the shape of a cross, reminding us that through the cross we find grace. The mark of the cross is the same that we place on an infant's forehead at the time of baptism, though not smudged with ashes. It's simply a gesture sealed in the waters of baptism. And it's a considerable amount of time before anyone might see the cross working in their little life. And by the time we are older and we've lived a little and failed a little, the cross does leave its mark upon us. And it marks us with forgiveness and grace, humility, and discipleship. I've often thought that the sign of the cross on our foreheads is kind of like a luggage tag that enables a bag, a lost bag, to be returned in the same way the ashes point us to our way home. So as you are ready, come forward for the imposition of ashes.
finish tonight, we, re we sing together, um, Day is Done, a beautiful hymn, number 676. you bring your people to yourself. Following his calling to repentance, we obey with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the sign that is on your forehead be engraved on your heart as you go from this place with the presence and the power of love, grace and peace of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord Lift up his countenance and give you his peace. And all God's people say, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.